Lesson 4 The Old Testament Hope Sabbath Afternoon October 15 By and by, the gates of heaven will be thrown open to admit God's children, and from the lips of the King of Glory the benediction will fall on their ears like richest music. Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34. Then the redeemed will be welcomed to the home that Jesus is preparing for them. There their companions will not be the vile of earth, liars, idolaters, the impure and unbelieving, but they will associate with those who have overcome Satan and through divine grace have formed perfect characters. Every sinful tendency, every imperfection that afflicts them here has been removed by the blood of Christ and the excellence and brightness of His glory, far exceeding the brightness of the sun, is imparted to them. Lift Him Up, page 54. Abraham believed that Isaac was the son of promise. He also believed that God meant just what he said when he bid him to go offer him as a burnt offering. He staggered not at the promise of God, but believed that God, who had in his providence given Sarah a son in her old age, and who had required him to take that son's life, could also give life again and bring up Isaac from the dead. As Abraham's hand is raised to slay his son, an angel of God who had marked all the faithfulness of Abraham on the way to Moriah calls to him out of heaven and says, Abraham, Abraham, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Spiritual Gifts, Volume 3, pages 106 and 107. How precious to those who are losing their loved of this world are their faith and hope in the promises of God which open before them the future immortal life. Their hopes may fasten upon unseen realities of the future world. Christ has risen from the dead the firstfruits. Hope and faith strengthen the soul to pass through the dark shadows of the tomb in full faith of coming forth to immortal life in the morning of the resurrection. The paradise of God, the home of the blessed. There all tears shall be wiped from off all faces. When Christ shall come the second time to be admired in all them that believe, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10. Death shall be swallowed up in victory, and there shall be no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more death. The life giver will call up his purchased possession in the first resurrection, and until that triumphant hour when the last trump shall sound and the vast army shall come forth to eternal victory, every sleeping saint will be kept in safety and will be guarded as a precious jewel who is known to God by name. That I May Know Him, page 362. Sunday, October 16. I Shall See God. The doctrine of the Second Advent is the very keynote of the sacred scriptures. From the day when the first pair turned their sorrowing steps from Eden, the children of faith have waited the coming of the promised one to break the destroyer's power and bring them again to the lost paradise. Holy men of old looked forward to the advent of the Messiah in glory as the consummation of their hope. Enoch, only the seventh in descent from them that dwelt in Eden, he who for three centuries on earth walked with his God, was permitted to behold from afar the coming of the Deliverer. Behold, he declared, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all. Jude, verses 14 and 15. The patriarch Job in the night of his affliction exclaimed with unshaken trust, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Job chapter 19, verse 25. 
The Great Controversy, page 299. He calls us to walk with him in the path of humble, truthful obedience. If we choose to live with Christ through the ceaseless ages of eternity, why not choose him now as our most loved and trusted friend, our best and wisest counselor? It is our privilege to have daily a calm, close, happy walk with Jesus. We need not be alarmed if the path lies through conflicts and sufferings. We may have the peace which passeth understanding, but it will cost us battles with the powers of darkness, struggles severe against selfishness, and inbred sin. The victories gained daily through persevering, untiring effort and well-doing will be precious through Christ who has loved us, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Lift him up, page 98. All heaven has the deepest interest in our welfare, that Satan shall not control us and conform us to his character. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly, shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. This Day with God, page 123. Monday, October 17. From the Power of the Grave Christ claims all those as His who have believed in His name. The vitalizing power of the Spirit of Christ dwelling in the mortal body binds every believing soul to Jesus Christ. Those who believe in Jesus are sacred to His heart, for their life is hid with Christ in God. The command will come from the life-giver, Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 19. By the power of the Savior that dwelt in them while living, and because they were partakers of the divine nature, they are brought forth from the dead. Selected Messages, Book 2, page 271. Those who closely connect with God may not be prosperous in the things of this life. They may often be sorely tried and afflicted. Joseph was maligned and persecuted because he preserved his virtue and integrity. David, that chosen messenger of God, was hunted like a beast of prey by his wicked enemies. Daniel was cast into a den of lions because he was true and unyielding in his allegiance to God. Job was deprived of his worldly possessions and so afflicted in body that he was abhorred by his relatives and friends, yet he preserved his integrity and faithfulness to God. These examples of human steadfastness in the might of divine power are a witness to the world of the faithfulness of God's promises, of his abiding presence and sustaining grace. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 525. The sacrifice for man was infinite, beyond the comprehension of the strongest intellect. Yet men who claimed to be partakers of these heavenly benefits, which were brought to them at so great a cost, are too thoroughly selfish to make any real sacrifice for God. Their minds are upon the world, the world, the world. In the 49th Psalm we read, They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, None of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him, for the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceaseth forever. If all would bear in mind and could in a small degree appreciate the immense sacrifice made by Christ, they would feel rebuked for their fearfulness and their supreme selfishness. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 2, page 197. Tuesday, October 18, from the depths of the earth. David entreated the Lord not to forsake him in old age. 
And why did he thus pray? He saw that most of the aged around him were unhappy because of the unfortunate traits of their character being increased with their age. If they had been naturally close and covetous, they were most disagreeably so in mature years. He looked forward to the time when he should be aged and feared that God would leave him and he would be as unhappy as other aged persons whose course he had noticed and that he should be left to the reproach of the enemies of the Lord. With this burden upon him, he earnestly prays. Psalm 71 verses 9, 17 and 19 quoted. If all would take the position God would have them, their last days might be their best, their happiest. They should lay aside anxiety and burdens and occupy their time as happily as they can in readying for heaven. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 3, page 1148. Since the days of David, there had reigned no king who had wrought so mightily for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God in a time of apostasy and discouragement as had Hezekiah. The dying ruler had served his God faithfully and had strengthened the confidence of the people in Jehovah as their supreme ruler. And like David, he could now plead, Thou art my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holden up. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. O God, be not far from me. O my God, make haste for my help. O God, forsake me not, until I have showed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Psalm 71, verses 5, 6, 9, 12, and 18. He whose compassions fail not heard the prayer of his servant. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22. Restored to his wanted strength, the king of Judah acknowledged in words of song the mercies of Jehovah and vowed to spend his remaining days in willing service to the king of kings. His grateful recognition of God's compassionate dealing with him is an inspiration to all who desire to spend their years to the glory of their maker. Prophets and Kings, pages 340, to 342. When depression settles upon the soul, it is no evidence that God has changed. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. You are sure of the favor of God when you are sensible of the beams of the Son of Righteousness. But if the clouds sweep over your soul, you must not feel that you are forsaken. Treasure up the lessons that His love provides. Let your faith be like Job's, that you may declare, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Lay hold on the promises of your heavenly Father, and remember his former dealing with you and with his servants, for all things work together for good to them that love God. Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 2, page 496. Wednesday, October 19. Your dead shall live. In consequence of Adam's sin, death passed upon the whole human race. All alike go down into the grave, and through the provisions of the plan of salvation, all are to be brought forth from their graves. There shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Acts chapter 24 verse 15 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 22. But a distinction is made between the two classes that are brought forth. All that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. John chapter 5 verses 28 and 29. They who have been accounted worthy of the resurrection of life are blessed and holy. On such the second death hath no power. Revelation chapter 20 verse 6. But those who have not, through repentance and faith, secured pardon must receive the penalty of transgression, the wages of sin. The Great Controversy, page 544. Jesus loves you, and he wants your love. 
He would have you remember that he gave his precious life that you should not perish, and he will be unto you a present help in every time of need. Only look to Jesus and tell him every perplexity and trial. Ask him to help and strengthen and bless you and believe that he hears your prayers. All heaven is looking upon you with deep interest. One soul for whom Christ has died is worth more than the whole world. I wish every young man and woman could appreciate the value of the human soul. If they would give themselves to Jesus just as they are, though sinful and polluted, he will accept them the very moment that they give themselves to him, and Jesus will put his spirit in the humble seeker's heart. Whosoever cometh unto him, he will in no wise cast out. You may love Jesus with your whole heart, and he will never disappoint that love and confidence. Our High Calling, page 98. The great military commander conquers nations and shakes the armies of half the world, but he dies of disappointment and in exile. The philosopher who ranges through the universe, everywhere tracing the manifestations of God's power and delighting in their harmony, often fails to behold in these marvelous wonders the hand that formed them all. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beasts that perish. No hope of glorious immortality lights up the future of the enemies of God. But those heroes of faith have the promise of an inheritance of greater value than any earthly riches, an inheritance that will satisfy the longings of the soul. They may be unknown and unacknowledged of the world, but they are enrolled as citizens in the record books of heaven. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4, page 526. Thursday, October 20. Those who sleep in the dust. From the rise and fall of nations as made plain in the books of Daniel and the Revelation, we need to learn how worthless is mere outward and worldly glory. Babylon, with all its power and magnificence, how completely has it passed away? As the flower of the grass, it has perished. James chapter 1, verse 10. Only that which is bound up with his purpose and expresses his character can endure. His principles are the only steadfast things our world knows. A careful study of the working out of God's purpose in the history of nations and in the revelation of things to come will help us to estimate at their value things seen and things unseen and to learn what is the true aim of life. Thus, viewing the things of time in the light of eternity, we may, like Daniel and his fellows, live for that which is true and noble and enduring and learning in this life the principles of the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, that blessed kingdom which is to endure forever and ever, we may be prepared at his coming to enter with him into its possession. Prophets and Kings, page 548. From garrets, from hovels, from dungeons, from scaffolds, from mountains and deserts, from the caves of the earth and the caverns of the sea, Christ will gather his children to himself. On earth they have been destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Millions have gone down to the grave loaded with infamy because they refused to yield to the deceptive claims of Satan. By human tribunals, the children of God have been adjudged the vilest criminals, but the day is near when God is judge himself. Psalm 50, verse 6. Then the decisions of earth shall be reversed. The rebuke of his people shall he take away. Isaiah chapter 25, verse 8. White robes will be given to every one of them. Revelation chapter 6, verse 11. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 12. Christ's Object Lessons, page 179. Christ would have everyone possess in abundance the grace of heaven. He desires that his joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. The hand of God is upon all those for good who seek him, but his power and his wrath are against those who forsake him and who trust in the help and friendship of the world. 
The children of God will know who is their helper. They will know in whom they can trust implicitly, and with Christ's help, they may, without presumption, have a holy confidence. Yes, his servants may safely trust in him alone, without fear, looking unto Jesus, pressing on in obedience to his requirements, leaving everything that is joined to the world, whether the world opposes or favors. Their success comes from God, and they will not fail because they have not the wealth and influence of wicked men. This Day with God, page 354. For further reading, Maranatha, Mysteries of the Resurrection, page 301, and The Upward Look, God and His Creation, page 340.